Hi everybody. Today we are talking about another emotionally difficult subject in caregiving relationships. How to deal with deadbeat siblings or siblings who never help. Now this isn't about siblings who might be abusive or overbearing. Totally different subject. It's about those siblings who you ask to help and they never show up or they refuse to help or they're just out of sight. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. My website is PamelaDWilson.com. Please share this video with your siblings who don't help. Even share it with your parents because there might be some insights in here about why sibling and family relationships go wrong when we're caring for elderly parents. So let's start with the deadbeat siblings. You're the main caregiver. You're doing everything for your parents. You're exhausted. You're tired. You're trying to get some help. And your siblings may say, oh, I'll do that, but they never do. They never show up. And sometimes maybe they live 500 miles away, 2,000 miles away. So they're just not around to see what's happening. And really in those situations, there's no way to understand unless you see something. So for example, how many times have you called your parents and they said, oh, everything is just fine, everything's wonderful. And then you go to their house and you're like, oh my God, you know, there's dishes in the sink, the laundry hasn't been done. Sometimes you actually have to see something for it to make sense. So your siblings who don't live near your parents, who maybe don't even see them once a year, have no idea what you're going through. And there's no idea that they can understand unless they actually see it. So you might think about sending them some pictures or sending them a video or showing them what's going on. And if you do that, possibly they may understand the situation and possibly they may help, but also they may not. Then on the subject of deadbeat siblings, how many of you have a basement sibling? <laughs> it's that sibling who lives in the basement or lives in your parents' house and they've been there all their life. Maybe they move in, they move out, they come back, they can't hold down a job, they can't take care of themselves, but unfortunately, for better or worse, your parents have allowed this to happen. They've enabled this to happen. They haven't encouraged your brother or sister to live independently, to learn how to support themselves. This could be a major problem when your parents need care and when they need to spend money on themselves rather than supporting your brother or sister. If you have a sibling living in the basement, it's time to talk about it. Even if your parents don't need a lot of care yet, bring up the subject and come up with a plan because if you don't, when your parents do need care, it'll be a nightmare. I have seen situations like this myself and I have dealt with them for my clients. So let's talk about all the sibling anger. How oh, I hate my brothers and sisters. I can't stand them. I'm so angry at them because they're not showing up. Here's the thing. You're spending a lot of time being angry. It's not good for you, physically or emotionally. Your siblings are going on with their lives. When we're angry at other people, when we're wishing bad things would happen to them, <laughs> really, all of that comes back on us. It doesn't, it doesn't go to them because they're living their lives and they're doing their own things. Now, obviously, they have to live with the consequences of accepting that they didn't help a parent and that maybe they've destroyed some family relationships, but other than that, your anger only turns back on you, the caregiver. So we have to find peace in that. And then if you are that deadbeat caregiver, if you're the caregiver who has never helped, you might have good reasons for why you're not helping. Be honest, tell your parents, tell your siblings. When your brother or sister calls to say, can you help, why can't you do something? Be honest and say, no, I can't. Don't say that you will and then you don't follow up. That only makes them more angry. Be honest and say, you know, when I was young, I didn't have a good relationship with mom or dad. I have no desire to help them today. I would rather focus on my family and my life. I appreciate the fact that you are that caregiver who is gonna help them. God bless you, but there's nothing that I'm going to do. Also, say the same thing to your parents. If your parents call and say, well, can you come help? Be honest and say, you know, mom or dad, 
I love you because you're my parents, but you're negative all the time. You complain all the time. That thing that happened when we were young, I've still never gotten over that. And because of that, I can't be your caregiver. I really don't want to help you. It's better to say those things and get them out in the open than have people wondering, why is my brother or sister such a jerk? Or why aren't my kids showing up? Put it out there. Be honest. But know that if you are that sibling who's not helping, a lot of unexpected things can happen. Your brother or sister could become exhausted and have health issues. Some caregivers actually get so despondent and isolated and alone and frustrated that they consider suicide. Your brother or sister could kill themselves because of all of the stress of caring for an elderly parent. Now, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. What happens then if you're not involved and you don't want to be involved and your brother or sister passes away and your parents come to the attention of Adult Protective Services? And Adult Protective Services takes over and finds someone else to help your parents that is not you. Maybe they appoint professionals. All of a sudden, families get very angry when this happens and they can't imagine why. Well, it's because you didn't show up. It's because you chose not to be involved. Then another extreme. Most children who care for parents are loving and wonderful and committed and want to do the best. Not every child is like that. Some children may take financial advantage of their parents. They could have your parents' will changed. So if you're thinking that someday I'll get an inheritance when my parents die, wrong. Your brothers and sisters, that caregiver, could have spent all of that money. They could have changed the name on property, made it so that when your parents die, there's nothing for you. But whose fault is that? You chose not to be involved. Now let's get to the crux of the matter. How does all this stuff even happen? Well, it happens because we have unresolved relationship issues with our parents. Usually the child who is the main caregiver has the best relationship or feels responsible or maybe is the appointed one in the family. Sometimes it's the youngest child, sometimes it's the oldest child, but usually there's someone who is expected to be that caregiver. And then everybody else disappears. So in my experiences over the past 20 years with caregiving families, this happens a lot. And it happens because something happens in a relationship that isn't dealt with at the moment. And there's a lot of animosity. And sometimes this goes on for years. So your brothers and sisters who moved away, who never come back to visit, who never call mom and dad, it's likely that something happened to cause that rift. I've had parents say to me, Pamela, I don't get along with my kids. I know I wasn't the best parent. I'd like to resolve that today. But it can be really hard when something happened 20 years ago and, and your kids may not want to talk about it today. Or you as the parent may not know how to have that conversation. And so the easiest thing is the path of no resistance. You don't have that conversation. You don't pick up the phone to call your kids to say, you know, I know I wasn't the best parent. Is there any way we can resolve this? That can take a lot of work and a lot of effort. And when something has kind of gone under the bridge for five or 10 or 15 or 20 years, we may not want to make the effort to resolve it. It may take a lot of effort, a lot of emotion to get through all of those things that happened and to be honest and to talk about it. And it can be threatening to have someone, have you go home to see your parents and your brothers and sisters say, God, I really hate you because you never showed up for the past 10 years. And for your parents to say, you know, I'm angry with you because you let your brother or sister have to do all of this. So you feel like you're at the end of all this anger. And you're like, gosh, here I came just to make up and everybody's really angry with me. <laughs> well, of course they are. It's because it was never dealt with at the time. So we in family relationships, the more that we can talk and work out these bumps and just be honest about whether we can help or not help or how we feel about something. If you can get it out in the open, sometimes family members can be more accepting 
and more forgiving. Not that they necessarily like your decision, but they can say, okay, I can understand maybe how my brother or sister feels that way. I don't, so I'm going to be the one who provides care. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Thanks for staying with me for this very difficult conversation. Caregiving in families can be a struggle. There is a lot of help on my website, on this YouTube channel. So videos, online courses, support groups, individual consultations with me. Visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com. Share this video with others. There's a lot of hope, help, and support out there. Thanks for watching. I will see you again soon in another video.